trunk stay ever ready. Assault and battery, if you scared, you never ready. All right, this video is going to be an unofficial video response to Stevie Breach. Uh, click 30, just a couple more months till tickets go on sale for WrestleMania, and then the road begins in January. One person who may not be at WrestleMania is Mr. Monday Night, Mr. Pay-Per-View as they call him, Rob Van Dam, who has been all over the place, I would say, in the past three months that he had been employed by the WWE. He did not sign, I guess, he didn't sign his three-month contract. And to me, he came in so hot, so on fire. I remember leading up to the pay-per-view every week, the vignettes would play, everyone would go nuts on Twitter, hashtag RVD, MITB. Uh, and then the time came, and it was like magic was in the air. You knew something special was going to come out of this last run of Rob Van Dam. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. He came back, he had a great match, great outing at Money in the Bank. Next night on Raw, another huge ovation. Everyone's happy to see him. But just a slow decline since then. He started losing matches, you know, here and there. But then it got to a point just maybe a month or two ago where it was like every match was just a loss. He would be putting over guys left and right in a way where it doesn't make him look good nor the other guy really look good because I don't think uh beating del or del rio beating him really did much for del rio because honestly i think del rio is one of those guys who never is going to get further than he already is right now even if you put him in there with cena rvd was always one of my favorite guys now and even before and i think he's so relatable in a way not drug wise you know that's a different story but in a way where it's like every ww superstar you see baby face is what we're talking about here they're always all about business. You know, they're always there. You know, we're going to win. We're going to do this. We're going to show the bad guys, uh, you know, who's boss. And Van Dam, you can go back to the Alliance days. All these guys had a big, you know, eyebrow down. And they were all about business, putting WWF out of commission. And Van Dam was the only guy who was always laid back, always chill. And But when it came time to, you know, wrestle, he put on a great show. He was a whole effing show, as you know, he got his name from. And I think fans can see that. Fans resonate that, you know, that personality of his. And I think that's what makes any babyface popular. You know, look at Daniel Bryan. He's he's not always that guy who's always serious about everything. You can see he's laughing. He's doing everything in the ring. And Eddie Guerrero, I would say, is the perfect example of that. He was there. He would have fun in the ring. People saw that and people enjoyed watching him perform outside the ring when it came to just having fun like Van Dam is, or does, and when it came to business, Van Dam was all 100% business. Not having him there, to me, I think it's a, kind of a disappointment because Van Dam is a veteran in one hand, but I think he's a guy who can still go. Uh, TNA, he was there, but you know, I think Steve mentioned it in his video, Van Dam said himself that uh, WWE put him over more in that one two-minute vignette than TNA did in his whole entire run there. They couldn't capitalize on it. They had something hot. Van Dam was over as over can be. You know, he hasn't been in the employed since I think it was 2007 or so, 2008, whatever it was. It was been a while since we've seen him in WWE and they didn't capitalize on it. They had something. He came in as an upper mid card level and you could have pushed him right to the main event, put him in the number one contender spot, even if it meant losing, at least have him in an important position. Don't make a guy who's so hot just coming back on his big return. Put him in just a you know a middle of the show match that's not going to mean anything. And Del Rio and the world title is exactly what that is. It's a middle of the match. No one cares about it. You, when the fans see that you don't care about Van Dam, when the company doesn't care about Van Dam, why should the fans care? And that's how you make a guy less over. You know, you see a guy like Dolph Ziggler, who at one point had the Money in the Bank briefcase. He was champion. Everyone went nuts. And where has he done? What has he done since then? Absolutely nothing. So, you know, people will still cheer him, but he's in that position where if you guys don't care, why should we care? I hope Van Dam does reconsider, at least sign a deal where it's like, oh, he only had a Monday Night Raw and, uh, you know, TVs and pay-per-views. But, you know, I'd like to see him at WrestleMania because I think that time is just so special for fans and wrestlers because it's really a time where... The whole world comes together. You can be someone like Van Dango who can be nothing one week, but the talk of the whole WWE universe or the wrestling universe, that is another week. And uh, anyways, I tweeted this too. 70,000 plus fans going RVD, 
for VD. That's uh, something to be, uh, I'd, love, I'd love to see that. But I hope he comes back and uh, because I think he can still go. If it was me, I would have had him come back and money in the bank, not win, but put on a good outing, have him feud with someone in that match, uh, have the uh, the winner of that kind of feud with Cena after that. And so Battleground main event could have easily been John Cena versus Rob Van Dam. It would have been meaningful. People would have cared. And unless the build up, you know, I think that matches, they did it once. And uh, that's one of the few matches that haven't been repeated as much as the other ones have because God knows that Randy Orton and John Cena have had 10 million matches. Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan are on their fifth or sixth match now. So, you know, there's very few matches that are left that haven't been beat to death. That was one of them. But that's the video. I'll see you guys next time.